Hello friends, welcome to the Viva Voice of Anatomy. Today we discuss the heart. Heart is a hollow muscular organ which is situated in the middle mediastinum which is enclosed by the pericardium in the thoracic cavity. Now under the name of the heart synonymous in the Greek it is known as a cardia and in the Latin it is known as a cordis. So the terminology related to the heart comes from these two words cardia and the cordis. Now we see the shape of the heart. The shape of the heart is a conical or a pyramidal in the shape, right? Its size, average size is 12 by 9 centimeter, right? And average uh, size of the individual is uh, slightly larger than the own cleans fist, right? Now the weight of a heart in the male is 300 gram average and in the female 250 gram. Location heart lies just behind the sternum. The one third of the heart lies right to the median plane and two third of it lies left to the median plane. The heart consists of the four chamber that is a right atrium, two, ven uh, two ventricle, two atrium. The ventricle is lies downward, forward and the left. Atria is directed backwards, upwards and toward the right. So here this is the right ventricle. This is the left ventricle and uh, from the posteriorly you can able to see the right atrium in which the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava opens and left to it is a left atrium this one left atrium in which one two and here three four pulmonary veins open right now we discuss the external feature of the heart so the heart is having an apex a base the far border that is uh, right border left border inferior border superior border and having three surface apart from the base that is a sternocostal surface left surface and the inferior or the diaphragmatic surface we discuss all this external feature one by one the first uh, apex the apex is directed downward forward and toward the left the apex is formed by the left ventricle it is a conical in the shape it is formed by the left ventricle the apex apex on the surface lies in the left fifth intercostal space 9 cm away from the midline just in inside the mid clavicular line so this is the apex the base is lies exact opposite to the apex that is upward uh, backwards and toward the right the base is formed see this is the base it is a quadrilateral in the shape it is formed in the left side by the uh, uh, left two third is formed by the left atrium and the right side it is formed by the uh, right atrium so the more part of the base is formed by the left atrium right so this is the base now we see the border of the heart it is having four border that is a right border uh, left border inferior border and the superior border which is uh, obscure from the view first the right border the right border is formed by the right atrium it is rounded and the convex it extends from a superior vena cava to the inferior vena cava which is open into the right atrium so here this is the right border the right border shows on the surface the shallow vertical groove the shallow vertical groove which is known as a sinus terminalis so this is a right border second a left border the left border is a convex and this convexity is facing upward and the left the left border is extending from a left auricle see this is the left auricle from the left auricle to the apex up to the apex this is the left border left border is somewhat ill-defined okay and left border is accompanied by you can see this vessel it is a marginal branch of a left coronary artery 
it is accompanied by this marginal branch of a left coronary artery now the inferior border inferior border is a horizontal and it extends from the opening of a inferior vena cava up to the apex so the inferior border is mainly formed by right ventricle and partly by the right atrium inferior border is accompanied by a right marginal bra branch of a right coronary artery marginal branch of the right coronary artery now this inferior border near the apex present the nodes this node is known as a incisura apicis cordi incisura apicis cordi inferior border separate the sternocostal surface from the diaphragmatic surface the last is the superior border the superior border is uh, slightly oblique and uh, it is obscure anteriorly by aorta and the pulmonary trunk and it is formed mainly by superior border is formed mainly by the left atrium and partly by the right atrium here lies the superior border okay so these are the borders of a heart now we discuss the surface the heart is having apart from the base only three surface that is a sternocostal surface largest the left surface and the inferior or the diaphragmatic surface sternocostal surface is a large convex surface which is directed upwards and the forward it is formed mainly by the right ventricle and the right atrium and the auricle and partly by the left ventricle and a left auricle now this sternocostal surface it present the anterior part of a right atrioventricular group here lies the anterior part of the right atrioventricular group and also it contain the ant anterior interventricular group anterior interventricular group which lodges the anterior interventricular artery so this is the sternocostal surface the second is a diaphragmatic surface that is the inferior surface now the diaphragmatic surface is a flat you can see this is the flat okay so the diaphragmatic surface in its left two third it is formed by the left ventricle larger part and the right one third it is formed by the right ventricle smaller part the diaphragmatic surface contain the posterior interventricular groove which lodges the posterior interventricular artery the last is a left surface the left surface is uh directed upwards backwards and the left and it is formed mainly by the left ventricle and partly by the left atrium and the left auricle so this is the left surface right so these are the surface of a heart now some grooves and this or the sulcus which is present on the heart the heart is having a four chambers two atria two ventricle so between the atria and the ventricle lies the atrioventricular groove or the atrioventricular sulcus which is also known as a coronary sulcus now this atrioventricular sulcus which uh, demarcate the atria from the ventricle uh, uh, separate the atria from the ventricle is a c shape like this anteriorly it is deficient because of a pulmonary trunk so it start from the here posteriorly it is continuous so this is a atrioventricular groove or the sulcus which is also known as a coronary sulcus now it is having two part the anterior part and the posterior part the anterior part of a atrioventricular groove is again divided into the right and the left half the right half contain the trunk of a right coronary artery and the left part here it contain circumflex branch of the left coronary artery the termination of a great cardiac vein and the commencement of a coronary sinus whereas the posterior atrioventricular groove contain only the coronary sinus right 
Now, two ventricle is separated by an interventricular sulcus or an interventricular groove. Interventricular groove lies anteriorly as well as posteriorly. Anterior interventricular groove lies on the sternocostal surface. It lodges the anterior interventricular artery, which is a branch of a left coronary artery. And the posterior interventricular groove lies on the diaphragmatic surface which lodges the posterior interventricular groove which is mostly the branch of a right coronary artery. Two atria is separated by the interatrial groove on the surface. The interatrial groove is deficient anteriorly because of the presence of the aorta and the pulmonary trunk and the posterior it is very much faint very much faint that separate the right atrium from the left atrium here lies the interatrial groove now posteriorly the interatrial groove meets with the coronary sulcus and the posterior interventricular groove this point the meeting point of this three groove is known as a crux of a heart so this is the sulci or a groove of a heart on the surface of the heart now we see some point of the interest uh, about the external feature of the heart the heart present the only following feature means the apex is only formed by the left ventricle the base is only formed by the left and the right atrium the diaphragmatic surface is only formed by the right and the left ventricle and the right border is only formed by the right atrium this is the only feature now we see the two-third one-third feature in the heart now the two-third of the entire heart lies left to the midline two-third of the entire heart lies left to the midline and the one-third of the remaining heart lies right to the midline second the sternocostal surface the two-third of the sternocostal surface is formed by the right ventricle and the one-third of the sternocostal surface is formed by the left ventricle. Opposite to each diaphragmatic surface, the two-third of a diaphragmatic surface is formed by the left ventricle and the one-third is formed by the right ventricle. Last the base, this is the base, the two-third of the base is formed by the left atrium and the one-third of the base is formed by the right atrium. Now, when the heart is given, ask in the viva, uh, you should tell, uh, you should keep the heart in the anatomical position. So, we see the anatomical position. It should be kept in such a way that the apex should lies downward, forward and towards the left. The inferior border lies horizontally. Inferior border should lies horizontally. And the flat surface that is a diaphragmatic surface, this one is a diaphragmatic surface, that should lies on your palm. So you should keep the heart like this in the left hand. So this is about the external feature of the heart. Now in the second video, we discuss the interior of the heart. Thank you. If you like our video, click on the like button and share with your friends. To get the regular updates on anatomy video by Viva Voice of Anatomy, subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon.